Okay, time for the next trailer update, and here is the reveal. Yes, it looks about 90% done, but probably far from it because even though I've got it all laid out there and pretty much together, now obviously the extension piece to the tongue, where is that? That's right over here because that just comes off to fold it, so there's just a pen holding it and a, and a bolt, so I just took it off so that it wouldn't be in the way, but here's how the trailer looks right now. And the first big time-consuming issue, which I'm sure I'm going to run into others, that I ran into this is this back piece here. Let me move a little bit. This back piece here, obviously this is a folding trailer, so this back piece hinges and flips up that way. So when you have it hinged down, the way it supports itself in front, since you can't really permanently attach it and have it fold easily, is there are two L brackets, and I'll show you those. That was not the difficult part here. Here's the hidden L brackets that go underneath there, and it just slides under, and that way all this front is supported. There's another L bracket over there. And then what you're supposed to do is there's this plate here. This is the main frame to the suspension, and this plate swings up and bolts into this piece right here, which has a trapped threaded piece. Let me get up close here so you can see a little bit better. There's a trap threaded piece underneath there. And as you'll see, there's a rivet right underneath it. That rivet's not original. I had to put that there. I found out. I thought this piece was tack welded in or something. I went to uh, take this plate that holds the back part of the trailer to the frame there to give it extra support. I put that up there and started turning the bolt. And this piece started moving way too much. And so I pushed on it and it fell out. It was just double stick tape was all that was holding this. I had no idea when this trailer was originally put together that it was just double stick tape. I just assumed this, it's kind of a square piece with a threaded part on top. I just assumed it was tack welded in there, but it wasn't obviously. So I had to take care of that. So what I did was I put a clamp on it and then just slowly drilled and increased the drill size until I could put a nice rivet there. I got a nice rivet gun set up here for doing this. So that wasn't a problem at all, but now that means that pretty likely this other side, and this will give you a better view of it, I'll show you the other side here. I'm going to have to do the same thing to the other side because, yeah, it's holding for now, but... And it's not like I'm going to lose the piece because when the trailer's operating, this piece is going to be pretty much stationary because there's going to be a, a bolt through it holding it. But taking the bolt out and folding the trailer, there's going to be some day that this is going to pop loose and fall down when I take the bolt out. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to drill a little hole underneath in the middle there and put a rivet through it just to give it some extra support and then I can end up doing that so these are the little things that take a lot of time the uh, assembly of the frame pieces and even the assembly of the suspension frame and uh, the new hubs too I don't know if you uh, remember from my other video but the uh, the two hubs that I had one of them was cracked so I just decided to get two new hubs so I did that yesterday. I thought I was going to be doing that today, but I felt a little more ambitious. So here's the new hubs. And the nice thing about the new hubs is they have um, bolts already pressed into them so that I can just use regular lug nuts. Here's, here's a view of the new hubs there. You can see the shiny little bolts there. So yesterday it was uh, putting the new bearings in, greasing them all up and everything like that, and then putting the caps on to protect it, mounting the the tires, obviously. So... Little by little progress is being made, but now these little things, and uh, yeah, if you notice too, I don't know if you can see in this, but this side here is slightly high, maybe it's about half an inch higher than the rest of the trailer on here, and then this back here is too. They're just, I've tried to true it up as best as I can. If you put a, um, an L angle on it, or some type of a, a truing square on it, every one of these is slightly different, either plus or minus. So what I basically did was on each subframe I measured from there to there and then from there to there and then I kept moving the pieces around until that was as perfect as I could get it which was a little bit less than an eighth of an inch. Did the same thing with the front piece too. Just measured corner to corner, corner to corner and then when they were more than an eighth of an inch close I just called that good enough. So, And as I put the wood on and used the trailer and loaded up it's probably going to change some more. So plus or minus an eighth of an inch or less is not bad I don't think so anyway that's the trailer progress so far I'm guessing I was gonna actually this I was thinking today too I was gonna have time to uh, 
work on the wood. I've got the pieces for the wood right here. Here's two three-quarter inch pieces cut four by four. Although I'll have to do a little bit of cutting to fit them too. I think for the for the front piece it needs to be slightly short on the length by about an inch or two. But if, if you want to look here, I'll show you the humidity right now. Humidity is running well over 70%. So it was running 80% just a few hours ago. So that means this, this is the stuff I'm going to use. Cabot. See if the reflections. Well, too much reflection. I don't know if I can get rid of it. Cabot Australian Timber Oil. Not that expensive, really. I just got it on Amazon. I think it was uh, 13 bucks and no tax and free shipping. So give it a try. They say it's some pretty good quality stuff, but it takes 24 hours minimum to dry. And with this kind of humidity, it's going to take probably three or four days to dry. So I'm not even going to mess with that now. I'll I'll do that on a day when the humidity is down to about 50% so I can actually have it dry in a 24-hour period. So anyway, that's the progress so far. Oh, and as you can see, i got the tap and die set too. All these screws and the screw for the blind hole and everything needed to be tapped out because they were so garbaged up. It just it would have been too much of a fight. If you're starting to fight with a bolt or a, a nut or anything like that and you got a tap and die set, just tap them out. It makes life so much easier. So that's about where I'm at right now until the next trailer update. Hopefully the next trailer update... I'll either, I'll either do an in-between just before I'm done with putting the decking on and waterproofing, or I may just skip that part depending on how difficult it is to do the waterproofing. I may just skip that part and show you the total finished trailer. But I think it's, it's looking pretty decent for a 35-year-old trailer, I think. so. Anyway, talk to you later, guys.